The middle offering, the peace offering, is called in Hebrew shelamim, linking it with the well-known word for peace, shalom. What does it mean? This is not simply a cessation of hostilities. It is the sense of well-being and delight when circumstances and relationships are brought into alignment with what they ought to be. A prayer answered, a friendship restored, a difficulty solved. In all of these, God's heart and his people are linked. It is the fellowship offering. The animal was given to God, and then he gave it back. A banquet was spread for priests and people, for the offerer, his family, and his friends, with God as the host. In Leviticus 7, we see three special occasions when they would bring the sacrifice. One, the thank offering, chapter 7, verses 11 to 15. Two, the vow offering, verses 16 to 19. And three, the free will offering, verses 20 and 21. The thank offering was in response to God's blessing in the past. The vow spoke of commitment in the present, and the free will sacrifices anticipated God's blessing in the future. But the significance is wider than that. The arrangements are almost identical with the burnt offering at the beginning. The animal, quote, without blemish is brought, hands laid on its head, it's killed at the door of the tabernacle, and the blood is sprinkled around the altar. But there, the similarity stops. Now, God spreads a feast to enjoy with his people. After the Lord received his portion, the blood and fat, quote, the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's, verse 31. The breast spoke of love, and as a wave offering, Verse 34, it was waved back and forth, picturing the horizontal benefits that come with God's love in our hearts. Then the animal's right shoulder became a heave offering, verse 34, given to the offering priest. What spoke of the power of the offering, moved up and down in a heaving motion, shows dependence on God's power for all we do. Paul's prayers for the saints stress these two truths. First, he prays, quote, that you may know the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, Ephesians 1.18. Then, quote, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ, chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Only through feeding on our blessed Lord's power and love can we have the twofold secret of peace within. Now see the offerer's family and friends with the rest of the offering celebrating in fellowship with God. A great example is found in the story of the prodigal son, Luke 15, 23. God wants us to enjoy those, ah, that's how it should be, moments in life, realizing he's always behind it. Now think about the mystery of the missing birds. The Lord wanted people to take him seriously, so he directed offerers to bring a young bull, the most valuable of all their animals. But he's also merciful, so he made it possible for those with fewer resources to bring a less valuable animal, something from the flocks. But God went further. What about the poor? With both the burnt offering and the sacrifices for sin, the Lord allowed turtle doves or young pigeons, Leviticus 1, 14 and chapter 5, verse 7. These could be caught in the street. It's a good thing birds were allowed for the purification offering after the birth of a male child. See chapter 12, verses 1 to 8 because that's all a poor carpenter from Nazareth and his young wife could afford when their son was born. Luke 2, verses 22 and 24. Yet in spite of such grace, 
In the case of the peace offering, no birds were allowed. Why? Doves and pigeons would be slim pickings, especially after the breast was removed for the priestly family. God always spreads a lavish feast for his people. <laughs> 